one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, Denny Mode, Superstar, Barbershop. How are you? I mean, are you feeling good? Well, I want to feel that you're feeling good, so make some noise for yourself. <laughs> it is the fifth annual poetry showcase here at Denny Mode, Superstar, Barbershop. Wow. Put your hands together for that. Wow. Now, how many, how many of y'all saw that the movie um, part one or two uh, called Barbershop? Yeah. 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 This cannot, that movie cannot touch what's happening here. This is a real barbershop in Harlem. Give yourselves a big hand. They lied and we cried and we tried to understand why they kidnapped us away from the motherland. We were brought here to serve and build a nation for them. America was shining bright. Our dreams were growing dim. They lied. We cried. Then we tried to keep the faith that the God they gave us would help us all escape. But the color was wrong and he didn't have a beat. So we juiced him up and put some soul in his feet. They lied and we cried. Then we tried to keep the faith. Mm -mm -mm. They lied and we cried, then we tried to overcome from the back of the bus where they told us we were dumb. Got the king on the case, started preaching the truth. We're on a mission from God. Our presence is a proof. They lied and we tried, then we tried to integrate, bring up the beauty of love, but down the ugly of hate. They gave a ticket to some Negroes to ride mainstream and a grand illusion of the American dream. But the brothers in the slams and the sisters on the street made a mockery of man. To us a glorify the weak. They lied and we cried. We tried to question why. Thousands of years they built upon a lie. From rock and roll right to the pyramids. They could never give us credit for the great things we did. They lied. The name of this piece is entitled Welcome to What They Call the Ghetto. Where cash flow has more say so than people's blood flow. Welcome to what they call the ghetto. Where hoods remain hooded, outsiders don't want to lift them. <laughs> Welcome to what they call the ghetto. Where applications are filled out, but rarely looked at. Where roaches and rats hand in their portion of the rent. Where kids tap dance over crumbs that used to be their ceilings. Welcome to what they call the ghetto. Where prostitutes risk their lives to pay their bills on time. Welcome to what they call the ghetto. Where hallway poetry equals wife slaps and baby cries. Welcome to what they call the ghetto. Where sending a car is considered recreation. Naked bodies wear sweat to substitute for clothing. Air conditioners are conditioned to only be broken. <laughs> Welcome to what they call the ghetto. Where unpatient parents yank the collars of toddlers. Street corner silo is the neighborhood Foxwoods. Municipal reading levels lower than the birth rates. Tears get saved in bottles because there ain't no plumbing. NYPD, more nervous than the natives. <laughs> Boxes marked fragile are studio apartments. <laughs> Politicians don't make visits unless it's imperative. Sugar water for breakfast. Quarter water for lunch. <laughs> Ain't no water for dinner. I already told you about the plumbing. <laughs> Ain't no door action figures. Kids play with doorknobs. Welcome to what they call the ghetto. But is this a ghetto? No. It's a neighborhood full of promises, wishes and dreams, shadowed by hopelessness. Self-esteem gone sour. Confidence gone rotten. Victims of Nikki Barnes's and Freeway Rick Ross's. Controlled substances 
brought in with U.S. assistance, sold to people seen as pennies with two holes in them. Their dreams of peace were killed off with a king assassination. Their restless souls rioted, leading to self-destruction. Progress was their middle name. Their last name was Hope. But civil rights activists got strung out on dope. Unemployment stayed high, giving rise to the depression. Anxiety went up too, increasing the crime and violence. Overpopulation increased the Darwinism. Survival of the fittest, every man for themselves. Decency took a backseat. Survival became the driver. Society called them animals, and no one wanted to bother. Slum lords left buildings in the hands of the environment, leaving city landscapes to like scenes from Private Ryan. Property values dropped, taking huge nosedives. Open wounds easily became gentrified. Brownstones costed a dollar, but no one wanted to buy. In this capitalist America, someone had to be the four guy. Giving this caste system a bottom line to paradigm. Now let's look at these developers giving cheers to each other. Their cheeks hurting from all the cheering and the laughter. I'd like to make a toast before adjourning this meeting. Without the presence of the poor, us rich cease to exist. Toast to the ghetto. Shall they not rise for no reason? Cheers to the ghetto for helping us keep our position. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, this poem's called Big. I had a distorted daydream once that I was no longer a mangled garment dirty tiptoed into an illusion that I were more than the discarded backwash of a compliment you pretty for a big girl ideal compared to me it's unlikely beauty would call me relative to its dimensions limited boundaries of attractive his eyes became distracted you know I never really had a thing for big girls but for some reason I find you posed like a notion stretching its way into an intoxicated daydream wrapped around a fantasy I always yearned to be socially acceptable. Slim body, firmed ass, pretty. Doe-eyed, wavy hair, pretty. Love-worthy, star child, pretty. Video runway, beautiful, an accommodation to your perception of inviting, but instead... I am baby sinking into the bloody bath water and attempts to be the semen removed by my mother's secretions. I was never meant to be or I don't deserve it. You know, for a fat chick, I have some crazed idea that I might be more than that sticky place your dick calls home on the nights you feel nobody loves you. I always loved a woman who could eat. I went to the deep-seated pangs of the belly of that beast that knows me too well in his hunger. I fucked a fat chick before. I bet I'm supposed to recognize the compliment in your condescending request for all of a fat ass and thick thighs and there I'll go slithering in the cracks of those lines for gratefulness, thank you. But I'm resting in an illusion painted with cum stains and regretful memories that stick to my breast. Smoldering skin, covered in stretch marks and battle scars, disenchanted young one. I have the cold sweat permeating the kitchen floor, cursing the blades for loving me too frequently. He told me I was pretty for a big girl. These lesions are counted. Even the ones you can't see to question how fucked up I am. 73 beauty marks, self-inflicted savage cosmetology to remove broken fragments of a daydream, still linger in a basement closet plastered in fear. You are pretty for a big girl. Those words like relent to an active imagination as if I could ever be exalted beauty, a mangled backwash in his tongue. I dated a big girl before. The picture of evening shade hiding his insecurities and his reassurance that he would screw me on a good day. And the backroom inquisition of flesh with the closet closet door closed. You are pretty for a big girl. Ordinary in his disrespect because my size is offensive. But he is willing to be that shiv steel trapped tongue rustling against the prison floor with lame attempts to martyr me with his dialect. You are pretty for a big girl. But truth be told, in the cut of his teeth, his eyes spoke. You sure are ugly for an angel. <laughs> last year who, who uh, um, was nominated for, for a position that's very high in the land. 
very well respected in land that, that makes important decisions that concerns our life. And there were people who were against her, and the reasons they were against her, there was a lot of racism involved. But then the people who were for her, there's like subliminal racism within there. And it rubbed me the wrong way, and being I'm from the Bronx, I felt like I had to write her a letter. So this goes to her. The Bronx Latina Supreme Court Justice. It sounds as sour as Hispanic Heritage Month. I refuse the kind of ideologies that imply the importance of my heritage be marginalized to 30 days. They must have made a slip of the tongue. Must have thought we couldn't understand their language. As if it's shocking that a resident of the Bronx can grasp this country's laws. Like it's an anomaly that a Puerto Rican isn't always bailando. <laughs> or cocinando. Or having sex. We don't have to wait until late September to understand what the Southwestern and Central Hemisphere's cultures have done for modern day society. This woman's blood is Taino warrior, African royalty, and European conquistador. She is as American as Joe DiMaggio, Frederick Douglass, double taxation without representation, the Four Seasons, conspiracy theories, infomercials, and shopping malls. Someone must think that this melting pot contains a white cheesy covering like onion soup. But last I checked, being a female of any race Born on United States soil is as American as it gets, as pure as it gets. Your honor, never let them call you the Bronx Latina Supreme Court Justice like you're some distinct charity case. Never, ever will I imply that, that the Blanquitos are our enemy, but they can no longer be viewed as the sole generic embodiment of this country either. As a fellow New Yorkian and Bronx resident, it is warming to see you get this new job. But you, you in this reference, you are their equal. And I will refer to you as such and respect you as such. So congratulations, Sonia Sotomayor, an American Supreme Court Justice. I like it. If you ever had son, you right, you like it, like I like it, I like it. I never knew that rose that grew from concrete. See me? I was more like the ivy growing on the side of brick buildings. Spilling wisdom with the God's strength building. We've been in and out the brick facade of teens with secrets. Though my roots seem shallow, I keep seeping through the chips to take hold. Beyond bold, I hang on in the toughest cold. As the wind blows on, I peep through crack like thongs. I scale these walls like songs. My foundation has been tried and tested. There's no getting the best of me. Nah, I never knew that rose. Was never given in the instance of love. No friendship ever crossed me. Will not allow them to cut me off at the root to admire me for my beauty so I hide my scarlet intricacies in my veins and force you to worship me for my strength. I won't allow your fantasies to hold me down. Not caught up in the fashion of living that's too limiting. Refuse to choose a path, see I'd rather branch out. I mean why grow towards the sky when I can go side to side and embrace the many corners of my domain? Rose is a lame. Fighting hard to get trampled and tied in a bouquet. Nah, that ain't for me. You can keep them streets. I'ma climb up this here like scaffolding. My purpose is much greater than just decorating. I got my start in the crack and I won't turn back. Shade doesn't fade me. Never cared much for the shine. Go ahead, let it rain. I'll find shelter under the lips of gutters and concrete. Watch me flutter in the wind. It whistles as it passes me by. I'm spread eagle sexy. Wind down slow and dry. Now let me see Rose grow and do that. Like growing towards the light is difficult shit. Growing into yourself is spiritual. I'll leave that prim and proper shit to other individuals. I don't need seeds. Where I touch their life breeds. I could care less about your affection or attention. My intention is to reach the top first. My only thirst is for survival. So I continue to climb these walls like so tribal art on Samoan extremities. I am complex. I have no time for complacency. Poor Rose. 
to break through concrete, to be burdened by expectations. I will not allow my limitations make themselves known to me. I want to grow more than just up. You watch her stand as I walk. Forge new paths while she grows stalks. Be admired on a table as I grow into art. No. I never knew that rose that grew from concrete. I was too busy getting over these walls. Peace, y'all. KRSM had this commercial talking about revolution was basketball. Do y'all remember that? No, nobody remember that? Yes, yes. You remember? remember? So this is for him. Uh, <laughs> it's called uh, It's called Sneakers. Yeah. Do it, yeah, just do it. Mm. Do it, yeah, just do it. Hate to break it down to you this way, but no, basketball is not revolution. And we need to end all confusion and disillusion and find a solution. Because the sign in the Nike sweatshop in Jakarta says just do it while CC and Sadisa earn $1.85 a day as you play. Less than the cost of a Nike shoelace forced labor in your face. Dunk this, swish, swish. Give me a star on which to wish. Wish away this poverty. Exploitation is all I see. $11.10 for a six day week as we speak. Just trying to keep your family fed might earn you a sneak upside your head if you're slow. Nike trips up on workers' rights, forced labor with only five hours sleep at night. You don't even think strike or you lose your job, maybe even your life. The Nike commercial says, we let our fears stand in the way of hope. We sit silently when we want to scream, why? Why? Because labor activists have much to fear. Tortured, raped, or disappeared might be your plight if you fight for human rights. Like Marcina from East Java, dead bloated body floating in the Delhi River. You don't even think the government will stand up and deliver you from confusion? Hell no. Nike pays well for this collusion, and there's no hope of ever reaching the delusion of a finish line. Meanwhile, here under the stars and bars, Nike CEO named Knight bankrolled higher than a kite. Portfolio 4.5 billion, yachts and planes and company trillions. Still a pair of Nikes cost three months salary for workers begging on their knees in Vietnamese. Yeah, yeah, I hear y'all wondering, what the hell's that got to do with me and you chilling, watching the tube under the blood splattered banner, red, white, and blue? Well, Michael Jordan earned $40 million a year just to let Nike use his name. Twice as much as shooting hoops was incidentally his only claim to fame. Quietly playing ball because he's got no balls, but Nike pays niggas well not to show and tell. Besides, he's busy space jamming with Bugs Bunny, playing golf, making all that money. <laughs> and as for Spike, He's got a habit of a $40,000 pair of season's tickets to the Knicks, that is. Plus a few million ducats for commercials, so much for rehearsals. Hey, Spike, take a leaflet read about the workers' plight. I ain't got time. I'm trying to get a taxi for my wife. While a 12-year-old takes a nine to the dome, murdered for his sneakers while trying to get home. One more brother laid to rest, a bullet in his head and chest. Another brother candidate for the penitentiary gate, creating jobs for them redneck prison guards in the joint, y'all get my point. So y'all could register and vote yo fast as you can, but the robber barons lay master plans. You know, candidates call him on the phone, Grand Boule and Skull and Bone. Those were 33 degrees, keeping people on their knees with old world money and new world disorder. They think they can do anything they please. Watch out for these secret societies, sneakers. Just do it. Hi. Peace, y'all. I'm just your average, everyday, run-of-the-mill Muslim